Welcome into today's edition of Just the Truth. Glad to have you join me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. President Joe Biden said yesterday that he didn't do that when asked about his official White House proclamation declaring March 31st, the same day as Easter this year as Transgender Day of Visibility. We'll cover the latest on this story. A federal judge in Los Angeles yesterday rejected a string of motions that were filed by Hunter Biden to dismiss tax charges that have filed against him. Court documents show that Biden is set for trial in June. Donald Trump has posted a $175 million bond in his New York civil fraud case, freeing him up to start appealing this massive judgment. Fox News White House correspondent Peter Ducey pressed White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre yesterday on the release of migrants who allegedly rioted at the border and beat Texas National Guardsmen. We all know that this uh, this made headlines again over the weekend when this federal judge released these illegals who stormed our border. And a Hawaii property owner is getting sued after finding out that a $500,000 house was accidentally built on her land Now, that's the good news, as she and the builder who made the mistake are trying to work through the legal quagmire. A squatter has now taken over the home. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but, you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills. (laughs) But I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth! Here's Joey Hudson. President Biden said yesterday that he didn't do that. When asked about his official White House proclamation declaring March 31st, of course the same day as Easter, as Transgender Day of Visibility, has created quite the stir among conservatives, among Christians. Uh, In an exchange with reporters at the annual White House Easter egg roll yesterday, The president declined responsibility for the proclamation when asked about House Speaker Mike Johnson's criticism of the action. Now, here's what happened over the weekend. I'm sure you heard the story. House Speaker Johnson wrote in a post on X that the White House, quote, betrayed the central tenet of Easter, adding that the proclamation was outrageous and abhorrent. He's thoroughly uninformed, Biden remarked when asked about Johnson's comments. I didn't do that. Biden said. In a statement to Fox News, a spokesperson for the White House downplayed the president's comments, noting that he didn't choose March 31st as the date for Transgender Day of Visibility. Since 2021, when uh, Joe Biden first took office, the White House has issued the same proclamation on March 31st every year, according to the White House. White House spokesperson Andrew Bates said in an email in response to the media, President Biden is right. He did nothing in conflict with the tenets of Easter, which he celebrated yesterday, nor did he choose the date of March 31st for Transgender Day of Visibility, which has been set since 2009. Democrats and the Biden administration point to the fact that, in addition to the Transgender Day of Visibility proclamation, the White House simultaneously issued a flurry of other proclamations, including National Donate Life Month, National Cancer Prevention and Early Detection Month, Arab American Heritage Month, Care Workers Recognition Month, and other proclamations. But the timing of the Transgender Day of Visibility proclamation generated widespread outrage among Christians who characterize its timing with Easter as disrespectful. Conservative commentator Benny Johnson said in a social media post over the weekend, what a slap in the face to all Christians in America. Uh, Representative Diana Harsberger, Republican from Tennessee, said this is a uh, direct assault on Christianity. It's evident the left is determined to undermine our religion and traditions. This isn't just blatant disregard. It's intentional. Biden has previously come under fire for his stance on LGBTQ and abortion issues, given his own position as a, quote, devout Catholic that he likes to say, who regularly attends church. The White House also used the same terminology when addressing Biden's pro-choice stance on abortion. A recent poll from Pew Research 
found that just 13% of Americans think of Biden as a, quote, very religious, while 41% say he's somewhat religious. Another 44% say he's not at all or not too religious at all. Also, a federal judge yesterday in Los Angeles rejected a string of motions filed by the first son, Hunter Biden, to dismiss tax charges filed against him according to court documents. Among the claims that U.S. District Judge Mark Scarcey rejected in eight separate motions were that federal prosecutors caved to pressure from Republicans or that Hunter Biden, 54, had immunity from a previous plea deal he had negotiated. Hunter Biden has pleaded not guilty to failing to pay $1.4 million in taxes between 2016 and 2019 while allegedly spending millions of dollars on drugs, escorts, exotic cars, and other big-ticket items. The trial date is set to start in June. And Donald Trump posted a $175 million bond in his New York civil fraud case, freeing him up to start appealing the massive judgment. The Knight Specialty Insurance Company backed the bond. An attorney for the Los Angeles-based firm wrote in a court filing Monday, As promised, President Trump has posted bond. The former commander-in-chief's lawyer, Alina Haba, said in a statement Monday he looks forward to vindicating his rights on appeal and overturning his unjust verdict. Trump successfully lobbied an appeals court to lower the bond from the full nearly half a billion judgment amounted to uh, the drastically reduced figure and gave him 10 days from the day of the decision on March 25th to post the lesson bond. Former president plans to appeal the $454 million penalty Manhattan Supreme Court Justice Arthur Ingeron hit him with last month, but was first required to either put up the money or post a bond for the court to hold until the appeal is decided. Trump is seeking to overturn Ingeron's February 16th decision that uh, charged him with the hefty penalty and banned him and his two eldest sons, Eric and Donald Trump Jr., and other top Trump organization executives from heading any company in the Big Apple for two and three years variously. The decision also bars Trump and his real estate empire from taking out loans in New York for three years. But with the bond now posted, those parts of Ingeron's decision are suspended until Donald Trump's appeal plays out. He must file all his appeal papers in time for the appellate division, First Department's September term. Trump had initially been required to, uh, to, to raise the full judgment amount by last Monday. The First Department issued a 11th hour decision in his favor the same day, reduce, reducing the overall bond amount. The presumptive Republican presidential nominee, claimed that he had more than enough money to cover the reduced bond and said he would be honored to put up the funds. The former commander-in-chief also will be seeking to overturn Ingeron's prior decision from before trial, suspending his business license in the Empire State as well. During last year's trial, New York Attorney General Letitia James' office, uh, which uh, prosecuted the case, she promised during her campaign that she would get Trump. She she literally ran. That was that was one of her campaign uh, platforms was to prosecute to run Trump out of business, uh, argued that Trump for a decade had exaggerated the worth of his assets to the tune of billions a year on annual financial statements in order to get better loan and insurance terms, which is just crazy to begin with and shows you how much she knows about business, which is very little. The uh, I, I can I can guarantee you that the insurance companies did their due diligence, and you know that the banks did theirs as well. Let me ask you this. This would be, this would be like you going to a bank, asking for a mortgage loan on, on a home, and the bank just accepting your analysis or, or your, your guesstimate on what the home is valued at without going behind you and having a third party appraiser appraise the home and give the bank the value that, that, that you, as you know a bank's not going to do that judge ingeron who saw what was a non-jury trial at at uh, the by, by the agreement of the trump organization found trump liable of fraud after 3 months of testimony including from uh trump himself eric and don jr Ivanka Trump, and other Trump officials. James said that she wouldn't hesitate to seize Trump's assets 
if he couldn't cough up the judgment or the bond, including some of his prized New York City properties, like uh, Trump Tower on Fifth Avenue. Trump side asked the first department to either lower or waive the bond, claiming they couldn't find a backer for it after approaching 30 different surety firms. And look, that's that's uh, I don't doubt that one bit. I can't imagine a surety company uh, in the United States who would take on almost half a billion dollar surety bond. Uh, Trump said that he didn't want to sell any of his buildings at a fire sale, which he would have been forced to do had a judge not come to their senses. On True Social, Trump said he shouldn't be forced to offload his properties, referring to them as his babies. In addition to the civil case, the 45th president also faces four criminal cases in four different states for a range of charges, including for alleged interference in the 2020 presidential election, which, uh, as we know, was called for Joe Biden. Trump has also denied all the allegations against him, both criminal and civil, claiming the cases have been mounted against him by a Democrat Party conspiracy. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave me a voice message. Your emails are welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. Fox News White House correspondent Peter Ducey pressed the White House for a response yesterday, particularly uh, Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre, on the release of the immigrants who allegedly rioted at the border and beat Texas National Guardsmen. They just turned them loose. The judge said that the prosecution was not ready. So what did he do? He turned them loose into the, into the U.S. I'll give you Karine Jean-Pierre's response in just a moment. First, let me talk with you about getting fit and losing that excess weight before we head into the summer. Is this one of your New Year's uh, resolutions that you're going to get healthy this year, that you're going to lose weight? For almost four years now, I've been talking about my journey with Ph.D. weight loss and nutrition. I lost 30 pounds pretty quickly, within just a few months actually, and I've been able to maintain that weight loss for soon to be four years. That's what I love about Ph.D. weight loss and nutrition. It's not a diet. Certainly not a fad diet where you're going to lose the weight and then put it right back on. PhD weight loss nutrition is based on the science of nutrition. Dr. Ashley Lucas and her team have come up with this fabulous program that can help you lose weight, help you get back into those clothes that maybe you haven't been able to wear for a long, long time now, and help you just feel better. You'll sleep better. You'll be able to focus better. You'll be able to do things that maybe you haven't been able to do in years. Why not make that phone call today and get started? 864-252-4925. Call 864-252-4925. Set up your appointment and get started today. Find them online as well at myphdweightloss.com. Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. Texas Magistrate Judge Humberto Acosta on Sunday, and we talked about this a bit yesterday, on Sunday, ordered the release of migrants who stampeded across the U.S.-Mexico border in El Paso, Texas, in late March. We saw the video of it. We saw this play out. Judge Acosta said that the court system was not ready to proceed with detention hearings for each defendant. So what did he do? He just let them go. He, he let them go with the promise that they had returned. We all know how that's going to turn out, don't we? So in yesterday's press briefing, Peter Ducey began the briefing pointing out that most of the border crossers were accused of beating up Texas National Guardsmen in this riot last month in Texas, and this judge has now turned them loose. Here's Corrine Jean-Pierre with the White House response. Thanks, Corrine. Most of the border crossers accused of beating up Texas National Guardsmen in a riot last month were released on their own recognizance Sunday. How does that make people in this country any safer? So I have to refer you to Department of Justice and DHS on that uh, uh, particular um, uh, reporting. Uh, I will say this, uh, as the event unfolded, uh, the Border Patrol was able to act quickly and get the situation under control and apprehend the migrants. And we were grateful that the Border Patrol was able to do their job. Look, there is a challenge at the border. 
right? Our immigration system has been broken for decades, before even before this president became president, obviously, three years, more than three years ago. And this president, a couple months ago, worked with the Senate in a bipartisan fashion to get a negotiation done, right? And what we saw is from the last president, President Trump, told Republicans in Congress not to move forward with this negotiation, this agreed negotiation, this agreed plan, this agreed proposal, because it would help Joe Biden. That's what was reported by some of you. And we can actually deal with this. We can actually deal with, with what we're seeing. And because they didn't move forward, right, because they didn't move forward with this proposal, because of the last president and because they, they put politics in ahead of the American people, we are seeing chaos. And so, we want to get this done. We did. We worked with Congress to get this done, to deal with the challenges at the border. President Trump got in the way, and because President Trump got in the way, Republicans are now getting in the way. So does President Biden wish that Republicans in Congress would help him make a law that made it easier to deport people? What the president wants to see is he wants congressional Republicans to pass, to move forward with a bipartisan border security agreement a bipartisan border security agreement that was supported by the Border Patrol Union, U.S. Chamber of Commerce, something that we don't see nowadays. And we were able to get that done. What the president wants to see is that being passed. He wants congressional Republicans to not put politics first, to put majority of Americans want us to deal with this issue. That's what the president wants to see. Well, she's right on one thing. Yes, the majority of Americans do want this issue dealt with but that they don't want it dealt with the way that Joe Biden does and the way Corinne Jean-Pierre does. Once again, the press secretary falsely says that the chaos that we're seeing at the border that started when Joe Biden assumed office, she's blaming it on former President Donald Trump and the Republicans because they oppose spending billions of dollars in this Emergency National Security Supplemental Appropriations Act which failed to pass the Senate. House Speaker Mike Johnson promised the bill would be dead on arrival when it came to the House. The bill would have shut down the border after the average number of entrances surpassed 5,000 people per day. It also intended to provide billions of dollars to Ukraine and millions more to Israel and, uh, and other foreign projects. That's why Republicans refused to support it. And when Republicans ask for a a bill that would address just the southern border on its own and not involve any Ukraine money, the Democrats didn't want any part of it. Joe Biden would not even consider it. And she says that Republicans are responsible for this. That's Joe Biden playing politics. Ducey further asked if Biden supports working on legislation intended to deport more people. You notice how she sidestepped that. She didn't want to answer that question. Because we all know that really Joe Biden does not want to deport people. He doesn't care if they are coming into the country because if he really did care, he would stop it. Just like he started it, he could stop it with the stroke of a pen. Jean-Pierre previously refused to tell Ducey if the rioters had been deported following the incident. She praised Border Patrol for handling the tumultuous situation and apprehending the migrants. She further blamed, and this was what was just really, (laughs) what really got me. She further blamed Republican Texas Governor Greg Abbott for the incidents and the presence of the overwhelmed Texas National Guard. Of course, we all know that Abbott placed the National Guard there at the border in an attempt to, to slow down these people coming in, the, the surge that he was seeing on his border. He's governor of Texas. He has a duty to protect the citizens of Texas. And, of course, the Texas legislature passed law that would allow Texas law enforcement to, to arrest these people. And the... And, the Department of Justice, Joe Biden's Department of Justice, has fought that from day one. Jean-Pierre said during a March 22nd press conference, and the reason why you're talking about the Texas National Guard, they were there because of the governor of Texas. The governor of Texas put the Texas National Guard there. We didn't put them there. He put them there, she said. What we need is actually real solutions. We need to see resources. 
The Border Patrol agents deserve resources. They deserve to be able to do their jobs, and we're not getting that from Republicans. Know what they need to be. You're right. They, they need to be allowed to do their job, which is to keep those people on the other side of the border, not have to hold their hand and walk them into, into the U.S., not have to arrest them only to, to turn them loose on their own recognizance, knowing they'll never come back. I mean, the numbers are there. It's no secret. Border apprehensions have surged big time since Joe Biden took office. Just look at the numbers. Since, since he, with an executive order, scrapped the remaining Mexico policy, since Title 42 that had been enacted during uh, Donald Trump's administration, since that went away, the apprehensions have surged from over 400,000 during Trump's final year in office. 400,000 to 1.7 million in Joe Biden's first year. The numbers have now exceeded over 2 million in 2022 and again in 2023 fiscal years. And Joe Biden wants to blame this on Donald Trump. One migrant released into the U.S., you'll recall, after prior arrest killed the innocent 22 year old nursing student, Lakin Riley that Joe Biden did not want to address, that he tried to ignore. Another allegedly sexually assaulted a 14-year-old girl in Virginia after being released by U.S. Customs and Border Protection. And these are just a couple of high-profile cases, and there's a lot of others out there. There are a lot of other crimes being committed by these illegals who are coming over here uninvited. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line. This next topic, there's been a lot of talk about squatters. and We haven't really talked a lot about it here on Just the Truth, but it's kind of hard to ignore it. A Hawaii property owner, and this has a little twist in it, is being sued after finding out that a $500,000 home was accidentally built on her land, and now she's trying to work through the the legalities of it while she and the builder who, who accidentally built the house on her property, while they're arguing in court, reports are that there's a squatter now occupying the home, as if it wasn't complicated enough already. Details on that in just a moment. First, let me talk with you about Buying your new vehicle. You looking for a new vehicle? Maybe you're a contractor. You need a new Ford F-150 or an F-250. It's never been more important, I believe, to support locally run businesses owned by people who live here in our community. That's what you get when you go to Furman Ford in Lawrence. Furman Ford. Matthew Furman, Jim Furman. When you walk into Furman Ford, you can talk with, with a Furman member of the, uh, a member of the Furman family, right there in in the in the business. Their name is on the sign because they realize their name is on the line with every single transaction, and they take great pride in that. When you stop in, when you give them a call, when you send them an email, you always have access to a member of the Furman family. They'll help you navigate some of the great deals they have on both their new vehicles and their pre-owned vehicles. And what's even better, when you drive your new vehicle off the lot, you know that your money is staying right here in our community, right here in the upstate of South Carolina. Go to FurmanFord.com, check out their inventory, then drive over to Lawrence and test drive one today. FurmanFord.com, FurmanFord.com. Here's the story now. Again, what's going on with the squatters? There are hundreds of... And that's not an exaggeration. Literally, hundreds of stories around the country about people squatting. How is this possible? How do local authorities allow this to happen? You either own a home or you don't own it. It should be that simple. And now I realize that occasionally there can be, uh, there can be disagreements over a lease a, uh, when someone's renting a property. I get that. Maybe, maybe they, they failed to pay their rent. And so the landlord has to take them to a magistrate's court 
to get them out of the house. But look, that's done pretty easily around here. But the idea that someone can just move into a vacant home and call it theirs and that local authorities won't do anything about it. I mean, this has gotten so bad that it actually was brought up in the afternoon White House briefing yesterday. Again, Peter Ducey asking Jean-Pierre what Joe Biden's st- uh, stance is, what he, how he feels about enforcing the law and squatters trying to take people's property. Here, here's the exchange. Totally different topic. How worried do Americans need to be about squatters? About squatters? About squatters. There's a lot of stories out there. Homeowners are showing up at places that they own where the locks have been changed. Some squatter has moved in and the homeowner has no rights. Does President Biden think that is right? So if, if my understanding is that this is obviously uh, uh, a local issue. We are certainly tracking that issue. Uh, the rights of property owners and renters must be protected. And we believe that, uh, you know, ultimately... What needs to happen is the local uh, government needs to make sure that they address this and they take action. And so everyone in their community uh, in this country wants the same thing, right? They all want the same thing. They want their families to be safe, and that's what we want as well. We want to make sure that Americans and their families feel safe. In Florida, there's a new law where victims of squatting can call the cops and have the squatters removed. Would President Biden support something like that? I'm, I'm not going to get into into uh, into hypotheticals from here. Uh, what I can say is that uh, ultimately this is a local issue, and it is uh, critical that uh, that local governments take action to address it. Uh, again. Everybody wants the same thing. They want to feel safe in their communities. That's what they want. Uh, we certainly are tracking these stories. Yes, we all do. We want to feel safe. I get that. But this was an easy question. This was a simple question. The answer should have been the president protects people's property rights. The president protects people who have paid their hard-earned money to buy a property against some deadbeat who moves in and thinks that that they don't have to pay rent, they don't have to do anything, and, and they can just take over the house. So back to the Hawaii story. The legal quagmire that the property owner finds herself in has multiplied now that the empty house has attracted squatters to the house. Ann Reynolds told the New York Post, You already made a mistake, and then you build on my land without my permission, and then now you're suing me for it? I was so mad, I was so mad that day. That's a really big mistake to make. So here's the story. In 2018, Anna Lynn Reynolds, known as Ann, purchased a vacant one-acre lot in Hawaiian Paradise Park on the Big Island. She purchased it for around $22,500 at a county tax auction. Ms. Reynolds lives in California and works as a relationship coach, and she planned to eventually move and host meditative healing women's retreats on this property, she said. But she was shocked to find out from a real estate broker that a $500,000 three-bedroom house had been built and sold on her property by accident. Kauai Development Partnership hired PJ's Construction to build around a dozen homes on properties the developer had bought in a subdivision of the Big Island's Puna District. The developer is now suing Reynolds and PJ Construction, among others involved in the home development. James Pasquale, an attorney for Reynolds, said it would set a dangerous precedent if you could go onto someone else's land, build anything you want, and then sue that individual for the value of it. And he's right, isn't it? So you own vacant property? and someone mistakenly builds a house on your property, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to just give them the property? Reynolds, Ms. Reynolds rejected an offer from the developer for a neighboring property to resolve the dispute. She told Hawaii News Now that she bought the lot for its, quote, sacredness. She liked the lot. Peter Olson, who's an attorney representing the developer, said that the plots are nearly identical after Reynolds declined the offer. My client believes Reynolds is trying to exploit PJ Construction's mistake in order to get money from my client and other properties. 
Which, which leads to a good question. I'd love to get your response on the Furman Ford text line. Put yourself in this situation. Is Ms. Reynolds being unfair by not agreeing to just give up the property? Let's change it for, some, for another property. I mean, the builder is saying, well, look, we'll give you another one just like it close by. Does she have any obligation to do that? And should she be made the bad person? Because they made the mistake and built a house on her property? Love to get your comment. 864-477-5639 is the Furman Ford text line. And is it fair for the builder to sue her because they offered her, they offered to exchange a, another vacant piece of property and she's declined? Is it fair that she's having to now spend money to defend herself? In an email, Olson told Fox uh, Fox News that his client also found rental statements about her spiritual connection to the lot to be disingenuous. Well, so what? <laughs> I mean, uh, she doesn't have to give a reason on why she wants that particular lot, does she? He says, my client finds Ms. Reynolds' statement about her spiritual energy connection to the lot in question to be disingenuous, cultural appropriation, culturally insensitive, and offensive. Olson said. However, Olson added that his client's primary claim was with PJ Construction. He said under unjust enrichment, his client is entitled to recovery if it conferred a benefit on Ms. Reynolds. The appreciation and the value of her property constitutes a legal benefit to her, and that retention of all that benefit would be unjust because my client spent $300,000 for the construction and Ms. Reynolds got a free house. Well, maybe you should... uh, you should be pay a little closer attention. I don't know how this happens anyway. Do you? How would a builder build a lot on the wrong, on the wrong lot? How does that happen? Piscali said that his client undertook an unnecessary burden through the experience, saying our client Ann Reynolds did not ask for the house, nor does she deserve the burden it brings. She's been thrust into a legal battle through no fault of her own, and we'll do everything we can to hold them accountable. An attorney for PJ Construction told Hawaii News Now the developers didn't want to hire surveyors for the process, but Olson told News uh, that the development partnership disputes his claim. So, in other words, the builder saying, "Well, the developer didn't want to spend the money on the uh, on, on the surveys, so we ended up building on the wrong lot. If they had had it surveyed, we would not have made the mistake." So, so that's part of it. That's that's uh, now you go back to the squatter issue. So you have a lady who has a home on her property that she didn't ask for. She's being sued to try to, uh, for, for, from the developer and the builder to try to recover the property so they can sell the house. Meanwhile, you got squatters who have moved into the home, and they're refusing to leave. When asked about the squatters, Reynolds' attorney said it was unclear when they entered the home or if they're still there, saying that there was human waste on the floor in the hallway, bathroom, and on the uh, toilet seat, and the walls had been, you can see photos that were posted of walls that had just been destroyed throughout the house. Reynolds told the Post that the experience has already taken an emotional toll on her and had made her property taxes skyrocket. Well, of course her property taxes are going to be more because there's a house on it now. Reynolds said, It's affected my ability to work. Who can in their right mind have peace? You need to have a peaceful mind in order to work in the kind of job that I do. It's like a cloud over my head everywhere I go. I'm the one who was injured in this whole fiasco, and then after that, they sue me. I feel like a criminal. What did I do to deserve this? What's your comments on that? Is it her fault? Is it the builders, the developers? And what's the, uh, what's the fair, fair way out of this for all parties involved? 864-477-JOEY is the Furman Ford text line. Love to get your comments. You can leave a voice message and emails joey at joeyhudson.com. Speaking of the Furman Ford text line, Texter says, Hey, Joey, I bought the Bible from Lee Greenwood, and I love it. It's God's Word, and that's what I care about. This is in reference to the story last week. If you missed it, go back and listen to, I think it was Friday's episode. Uh, We talked about that the uh, the Democrats are giving Donald Trump 
a hard time because he has partnered with Lee Greenwood to sell a patriotic Bible as part of his campaign. I asked the question, what do you think about Donald Trump selling Bibles? He's come under a lot of fire from the Democrats because of it. Albert says, uh, and primarily from Senator Warnock from Georgia, he, he uh, preached on it in uh, his Easter sermon. So Albert says, I wonder what Christ would think about Senator Warnock using the pulpit to promote political agendas, disharmony, etc. The Trump Bible sale might reach someone Senator Warnock can't. Senator Warnock, look in a mirror before you open your mouth. I don't think he's going to do that, Albert. Jeff says, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, Lee Greenwood had already made the Bibles and Trump just agreed to join him. I think you're right. I think Lee Greenwood had had uh, done the Bibles, and, and Trump sort of uh, endorsed them. Paul writes, Happy April Fool's Day, a.k.a. Transgender Day of Visibility. Now you can pile all the left celebrations into one single day. Virginia, Joey, I'm a Trump supporter, but I think he's hurting himself with selling the Bibles. It comes across like TV evangelists hawking Bibles for their own benefit. She says, I'm also a Mike Gallagher listener. But he should apologize to the uh oh should apologize to the youth pastor from Pennsylvania who called him very sincerely with the same opinion. I appreciate Mike, but was very disappointed in his unwarranted treatment of this caller. As his close friend, can you get him to calm down? <laughs> That's a big order, Virginia. A big order. She said, to be clear, I appreciate you both for all you do. Thank you. Well, thank you, Virginia. I appreciate your comment. And by the way, I did pass it on to Mike uh, that that you were concerned. You didn't think that you that he had been fair to the you. I didn't hear the call, but uh, I passed your note on to to the youth pa- uh, that he had not been fair to the youth pa- pastor. Tony says, "Wonder how long it would take for an uproar if someone burned a truck full of Korans." Again, where is Republicans? Faith. Well, Joey, it might be good if Warnock cleans up around his own door before cleaning others' doors. His wife or ex-wife can tell us much about his conduct. He is not one who needs to talk about wolves in sheep's clothes. Surely Americans have figured out that Grandpa Joe wants Americans replaced with these illegals. Makes me very angry. Faye, take a deep breath. Don't, get, don't let Joe get under your skin. Faye says, real Americans have got to vote like never before. And we must stay prayed up. That's what we need to do, Faye, is pray. Susan says, here's an update on the thin red line flag that the registered socialist councilwoman made the East Village Fire Department take down. Due to the firestorm, no pun intended, a protest, the fire commissioner let them put the flag back up. Really? Susan, thank you for telling me that. I, hadn't, I haven't seen the update on that story. I'll have to look it up and we'll talk about it. On tomorrow's Just the Truth. Appreciate all of your comments on the Furman Ford text line. Yours is welcome, 864-477-5639, 864-477-5639. Send your text messages. You can leave a voice message. Emails always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. So yesterday, Monday at, at noon, filing for the June 11th primaries closed in South Carolina. And boy, do we have a lot of candidates lining up to run in in the June 11th primary, both Democrats and Republicans, although more Republicans than Democrats. By the way, you have until May the 12th to register to vote in this year's primaries. We have some of the highlights for you. We'll, uh, We'll go over those with you here in just a minute. First, let me talk with you about Discounted Appliance Warehouse in Easley. You know they're my preferred place. Anytime I need appliances, whether you're replacing a broken appliance or just upgrading to enhance the look and feel of your home, when you're ready for an appliance, you don't want to have to wait weeks, you don't want to have to wait months, and you want to make the right decision. You want to choose the right appliance for you and your family. That's what you're going to get at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. With over 1,500 appliances in stock at any given time, you can buy today and often use it today. Quite often, They'll be right behind you. Johnny and the, and the team, uh, they, they have an expert installation department, an award-winning service department. They have warranties. 
They're with you after the sale. They're not going to sell you an appliance and then not be there if you need need service. Discounted Appliance Warehouse. They're also proud to offer, uh, to offer Speed Queen, the only washer and dryers with manufacturer's warranties that cover parts and labor for up to seven years. Discounted Appliance Warehouse in easily or online at dawpickens.com, dawpickens.com. A lot of races to uh, consider as primary uh, filings closed yesterday at noon. And we have several here in the upstate, and we'll be talking about some of these. And uh, for those of you in other areas, Send, if you have information that I need to know, email it to me, joey at joeyhudson.com. We'll be uh, looking at, at some other areas. Primarily what I have right now is in upstate South Carolina, Greenville, Spartanburg, Anderson, Oconee. Uh, of course, the congressional races are getting a lot of attention. The third congressional district, which is being vacated by Jeff Duncan, you have Sherry Biggs. Kevin Bishop, Kevin just retired from Senator Lindsey Graham's office. Mark Burns, you've heard that name before. Mark is, has run um, uh, run for Congress before. Frankie Franco, Bill Healy, Stuart Jones, he's a state rep from Lawrence. Michael Lapierre, he uh, ran in the 4th Congressional District uh, a, a couple years ago. And Elspeth Snow Murday. These are all Republicans who are running for the 3rd Congressional District. By the way, coming up, April the 22nd, I think it is, I'll be moderating a debate with all of these candidates uh, for the Anderson Republican Women's Club. And then April the 25th, I believe it is, I'll try to get these posted on Facebook, uh, I'll be moderating a debate for the Oconee County Republican Men's Club. So you're going to have uh, some opportunities in uh, if you live in those areas to hear from these. In the 4th Congressional District, the final GOP race is between Adam Morgan and William Timmons. Of course, Congressman Timmons is the incumbent there. In some of the local Senate races, one of the ones that's getting a lot of attention, District 6, which is uh, Greenville County, currently held by Senator Dwight Loftus. Senator Loftus is retiring after a long, long career. Uh, he served on the Greenville County School Board, South Carolina House, and finishing his career uh, in the uh, South Carolina Senate. Uh, Representative Jason Elliott is running for that seat. Ben Carper and Dan Nichols. Then over in District 12, this is part uh, Greenville County, part Spartanburg County. Senator, former Senator Lee Bright is running for that seat again. Hope Blackley, Skip Davenport, and Roger Nutt. Uh, Roger Nutt, by the way, is a state rep. He's giving up his seat to, uh, to run for uh, this state Senate. And boy, there's a, there's a long list of people running for his House seat um, as, as well. Sheriff Hobart Lewis has opposition in Greenville County as he faces a, a, a challenge for uh, Greenville County Sheriff. There's a, a long list of, uh, of people running for, like, Greenville County Council seats, um, Greenville uh, State House seats, the uh, coroner. We have a coroner's race in Greenville, Dale Arterburn and Mike Ellis. Uh, oh, oh, I failed to tell you, Mike Fortner is running against Sheriff Hobart Lewis. Then you have the clerk of court race as well in, in Greenville. Mary Bryce Garrett, who is the current clerk of court, being challenged by Jay Gresham. Over in Spartanburg County, Spartanburg County Sheriff Chuck Wright has a challenger this year as well. And um, uh, uh, Nick Duncan is, is challenging Sheriff Chuck Wright. A lot of uh, house... House uh, races over there in Spartanburg County as well being challenged, as well as, uh, as I mentioned, the Senate District 12 uh, uh, seat that, that's pretty crowded. Some of the House members, District 33, for example, you have Bill DeVore, 
who is challenging uh, current Representative Travis Moore. District 34, Joanne LeBounty, Spartanburg County School District Trustee Henry Ross, and Sarita Edgerton running. Uh, South Carolina Representative Bill Chumley is being challenged by Kevin Dunn. And Representative Rob Harris, the incumbent, is being challenged by Limentown Councilman Adam Crisp. Uh, and, and again, a whole list. There, there's so many that it's just hard to uh, it's hard to go through all of them. You can find this online, uh, and we'll try to post some uh, some of the links as as well. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Appreciate you joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time. Visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list, just go to joeyhudson.com, click on Connect with Joey, and receive our emails to stay up to date. Find me on YouTube as well, on Facebook. Follow me on Facebook. Just search for Joey Hudson on any of the social media sites. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Keep those comments coming via the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY. Keep your emails coming as well joey at joeyhudson.com we're back again tomorrow hope you'll plan to join us then until then remember god's got this he's still in control